Fandango Indie Movie Guide, and as the title suggests, I'm going to be your guide. Your guide through indie films, the films that are opening this weekend. So let's start our journey in Washington, in a very corrupt world of politics. You could say the time could not be more right for Miss Sloan. You're a piece of work, Elizabeth. I was hired to win. I use whatever resource I have. The always fierce Jessica Chastain stars as Miss Sloan, who is a tough, stop at absolutely bloody nothing to get her way lobbyist, who switches from pro-guns to anti-guns and then gets caught up in a whole web of lies and uh, corruption and extortion and fact and fiction and there's a lot of fiery speeches. The winner plots one step ahead of the opposition. We have to make it personal. You know the word annihilate? It means reduced to nothing. I cannot say enough good things about Jessica Chastain. She's always incredible and she is tough in this role, but not over the top, which is important. I also liked seeing Gugu and Batho Raw as her co-star alongside Mark Strong and Alison Pill. And yeah, the film, which is directed by John Madden, does go over the top. It gets crazy and very unrealistic towards the end. But Jessica Chastain's performance is worth the ticket price alone. And Miss Sloan is in theatres this weekend. It's about making sure you surprise them. And they don't surprise you. The next stop on our journey is to Japan for Mifune, The Last Samurai. This is a documentary about Toshiro Mifune, who was a favorite of the famous Japanese director Akira Kurosawa. Mifune has so much courage, he just explode onto the screen. The film is made up of various interviews like Steven Spielberg, who you just saw, Martin Scorsese, there's film clips, there's archival stills, and it's all held together by the soothing narration by Keanu Reeves. Without them, there would have been no Magnificent Seven. Clint Eastwood wouldn't have a fistful of dollars, and Darth Vader wouldn't be a samurai. Mifune's performance is layered, complex. He studied the movements of lions. He's like a caged animal. Now, if you're like me and you're a bit of a Toshiro Mifune fan or a bit of a Kira Kurosawa fan, then you might not learn much new stuff here, but it is a treat for film geeks to see it all together. And if you're not, if you don't know much about Japanese cinema, this could be a good place to start. A lot of actors who are very serious about their craft study him. It's up to the actor to turn a character into a hero. A lot of people try to imitate Mifune, but nobody can. The last stop on our journey takes us down under to my home country, Australia, via India. This is my pick of the week, Lion. Do you have any idea what it's like knowing my real brother and mother spend every day of their lives looking for me? Huh? How every day my real brother screams my name. Can you imagine the pain they must be in not knowing where I am? This is actually a true story. It's about a young Indian boy who got lost from his brother. He ends up being adopted to Australia and then years later decides he wants to try to find his family. The problem is he doesn't have any real memory of his town or any way of finding his family. And even with Google Maps, it's like a needle in a haystack. I always thought that I could keep this family together. I need you, Saru. What if you do find home and they're not even there? And you just keep searching? Everyone's going to be talking about Nicole Kidman in this movie because her pain, her vulnerability, her emotion and grief is, and strength as well actually is right on the surface and she's amazing. But I also want to give a shout out to Dev Patel. He has really grown up. He is a man now. He does a great Australian accent and he is the lead of the piece. He's the emotional center of this movie. Every night I imagine that I'm walking those streets home and I know every single step of the way. What was the key for you to understand that kind of complex grief that comes with adoption cases like Saru's? Uh, you know, I went to India a couple weeks before we started and I was traveling on the trains alone and I was writing diaries and visiting orphanages and it was a process of uh, looking inside of isolation mm -hmm. and really, um, you know, it takes a great director to make you feel so comfortable and exposed in your skin mm -hmm. to be able to be still and uh, he, Garth is completely that, you know, it allows you to reach a level of honesty which is pretty, pretty amazing. 
Yeah, you've said before that making this film felt like it would change your life. Mm. Was a lot of that because of Garth Davis? Completely, yeah. 100%. He's my guru. <laughs> <laughs> but he, yeah, he is just such a spiritually inclined man. He's a bit hippy dippy, yeah. <laughs> but also just like completely technical and amazing as an artist. Like he understands, you know, cinematography, he understands visuals, he understands all of that. But uh, he gives these grounding hugs on set when you're stressed out and you just... I love that. Can we end with a grounding hug? Yes! Yay. That's how we're going <laughs> So to recap, in theatres this weekend, you can see the political thriller Miss Sloan, the very emotional lion, or the treat for film geeks Mifune, The Last Samurai. And now with Lion, my top five or tops looks like this. Sorry The Handmaiden, but now it is Moonlight, Manchester by the Sea, Arrival, Nocturnal Animals, and Lion. That's it for another week. I hope you enjoyed your little tour through the indie films that are out this weekend. Don't forget to leave me a comment below saying which movie you'd like to see, or you can talk to me on Twitter at Alicia Malone. Bye!